we're back. <laughs> Kirk, it was so great to see you. I'm Deborah Giddings, and I am going to read today's daily word. And the word for today is understanding. I open myself to spiritual understanding. When I feel frustrated by a personal or professional challenge, or feel unsafe or concerned about a situation or event, I seek greater understanding. When I try to understand, I open my heart. Maybe I just need to gather more information or request the advice of someone I trust. If I am in conflict with someone, I practice understanding by listening with a curious mind and loving heart. I grow in spiritual understanding when I discern and heed my inner guidance. Beyond conscious thought, spiritual truth begins, begins to illuminate my consciousness. As I release all that stands in the way of understanding and stand firm in the love that calls it forth, I am guided in my, by my growing spiritual understanding. And a quote from the Psalms, chapter 119, verse 144. Your decrees are righteous for, forever. Give me understanding that I may live. And so let's just take this affirmation into just a moment of silence. I open myself to spiritual understanding. I open myself to spiritual understanding. Hold this in your thoughts for the day, for the week, and namaste. Thank you, Deborah. And thank you, Kirk. Uh, we seem to have lost our power for a little bit there, so sorry about that. Um, be talking about what now? What now? We have uh, fasted and feasted through Lent, looked at our own crucifixion or crossing out of ever thoughts on Good Friday, and then on Sunday we celebrated our resurrection in community, rising up together. We sang and viewed the po photos of each other that were pinned to the pews, what a moment. And afterwards, with tears in our eyes, we, we left Facebook. And we looked around, only to find that we're still in isolation, still with this pandemic. And that resurrected feeling starts to deflate. During if there ever was any type of resurrection. And we find ourselves once again swallowed up by this pandemic and once again simply trying to keep calm and be kind. Hmm. Resurrection? What resurrection? Hmm. What now? Perhaps in your life you've noticed that whenever you step out to do something completely different, it seems difficult, exhausting, and sometimes even scary. And this voice pops up in your mind that says, yeah, this is scary. Come back to the couch. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Don't get involved. Don't pay attention. Keep foggy and unfocused and vague. And if you want to focus, Focus on somebody else. 
And you know who else felt that way? The 12 disciples. Their leader had died. They didn't know what to do. With the authorities now coming after them, I mean, how safe were they from crucifixion and death? It was each disciple for himself trying to deal with their own fear and grief. Maybe it would be comforting to just go back to a time before Jesus. But then Jesus resurrected. He came to them and, and told them that the Holy Spirit would guide them, that spirit within each one of them. Jesus even directly dealt with the questioning Thomas. How brave was Thomas to question, to ask, to touch? How brave are we? And now we come to the third appearance of Jesus, as related in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, 21. And I'm going to paraphrase the story for you. But I want you to remember that unity interprets the Bible metaphysically, beyond the physical, beyond the literal. So all the characters in the Bible, even Jesus, represent you. Perhaps a younger you, perhaps an older, wiser you, perhaps a you of today. So hold that in your mind as you hear the story. Gathered on the beach was Peter, and who we know metaphysically represents faith. Thomas, who represents understanding. Nathaniel. Well, Nathaniel is another name for, Bartho for Bartholomew. And Bartholomew represents imagination. The sons of Zebedee. And that's James, who represents wisdom. And John, the disciple that Jesus loved. John, who represents love. And there are two other disciples that are not named. So a total of seven disciples of the twelve. Well, Peter said to all of them, I'm going fishing. And yes, I believe he did it with a scowl and an attitude. It doesn't say that, but I'm believing that right now. Okay? And so they all agreed to go with him. Now remember, this is their old employment, their old job before they met Jesus. So what do you do when you're feeling lost and sad? Well, you go back to what you know. Well, they were out the entire night in that boat. Seven great fishermen. And guess what? They didn't even catch one fish. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach and he called out to them, Children, have you caught no fish? Not recognizing him again, they answered him, No. Jesus then called out to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they did, and the net became so full of fish that they could barely bring it to the beach. Now the disciple whom Jesus loved, and we all know that is John, said to Peter, Faith, it is the Lord. And when Peter realized that it was Jesus, he swam to the shore to be with him. The other disciples came to the shore in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. When they had gone ashore, they saw a fire there with fish on it, cooking, and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you just caught. And then he invited them to come and have breakfast. How sweet is that? Even now, Jesus is lovingly serving. We also have this great bromance <laughs> between Jesus and Peter. And those two have a private walk and a talk. And during this conversation, Jesus tells Peter to feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Jesus explained that as Peter goes forward in this ministry, the path is not going to be easy, just as it wasn't easy for him. But he tells Peter, follow me. Well, at that point, Peter turns around and sees 
the disciple that Jesus loves, following them, John. Now, have you noticed how often Peter and John are together, that faith and love always seem to be with each other? So when Peter sees John, he says to Jesus, Lord, what about him? What about him? And Jesus says to Peter, what is he to you? Follow me. Ah. So let's break this down metaphysically. The first one we was Jesus. This is the individual who most fully expressed the Christ potential. And what is the Christ potential? It is the divine idea. It is the spiritual perfection inherent in every single person, even you. For everyone was truly made in the image and likeness of the divine. Well, what about all those fishes? Well, they represent divine ideas, thoughts from God. You know, the disciples went to their comforting past. They made a choice, a free will choice. And guess what? They ended up with nothing. Now, my mentoring minister used to say, uh, used to tell me that God has second best for those who won't accept the best. Oh. Mm. You have a choice. Go it alone and try and live in the past or go with spirit. And begin in the present moment, moving into the best future ever. So when we cast our nets, our thoughts, on the right side, we are choosing to think thoughts of spiritual truth. It's the side of love and faith, and we claim a new thought. Now, Peter represents the spiritual power of faith. It is faith that makes these divine ideas, the fish, substantial. And Jesus invites, now Jesus invites the disciples to come and have breakfast, to break your fast. When we are upset, sad, worried, angry, in grief, we often find it hard to focus. And so we keep our thoughts foggy, and sometimes we even let our thoughts amok picking up any negative or harmful ideas out there. And it's true that sometimes we may need to shut down as a way to rest and heal, and that's fine. But after a while, we need to think a new thought. We need to break our fast. And instead, think a new and positive spiritual thought. We need to move forward always living from the inside out, first in spirit and then in the physical. Now, after first providing the disciples with food, divine ideas, Jesus says three times to Peter, feed my sheep. What's that about? Well, sheep represent those pure thoughts. And Jesus is reminding Peter that we are to follow the Christ in thought, word, and deed, reminding us these pure, innocent thoughts need to be nurtured through faith and love. And if we are to express life in the highest degree, we must continually give our attention to life-giving spiritual ideas. We need to follow Jesus. And finally, Jesus responds to Peter's concern about the disciple John following them. Right? Jesus very simply says, what is that to you? Follow me. Well, faith and love are the best combination ever. So why resist that? Why try to do what everyone else is doing? Thinking, saying, what is that to you? Follow your own spiritual Christ potential. Listen to that still small voice within. The voice or the God thought that is in the best interest, not, not just for you, but in the best interest of everyone. Jesus is constantly trying to get us to unplug from the mob, unplug from the group thinking, 
and tune into the spirit within your own indwelling divinity. Follow your God. It's also an opportunity for us to decide what really is important to us. Is our fear and worry really what's important? Is our fear about what's going to happen to me and my loved ones? So instead, we have the opportunity to ask the indwelling spirit, the Christ within. And we hear that Christ say to us, what is that to you? What is this concern, this fear? Follow me and all will be taken care of. Live in faith and love. Today, we are being instructed not to go back. Instead, with a clear faith and a strong love to move forward. No matter how strong the allure of the past may be, when you combine the two spiritual powers of faith and love, you can not only think a new thought, but you can be steadfast and you can release any fear, any doubt, any worry. Faith and love, along with our spiritual powers of understanding, wisdom, and imagination, well, we can then move, then we can more easily focus our thoughts and become aware of our oneness and our ability to rise above. But it is a process, not an event. We love and thank the resurrection, and that is wonderful. But it was the culmination of a process that somehow we ended up seeing as an event. And now we're done. Okay, we're all finished. No. Every ending also has a beginning. So now what? Now we pick ourselves up off the couch, <laughs> out of our unfocused thoughts, and begin anew with faith and love. We can, we can live spiritual faith and love when we are inspired to take our thoughts off of ourselves and instead choose loving service. Do something kind and wonderful for others. Even, maybe even for those that you're living with. <laughs> and doing so without any expectation of an acknowledgement or a, or a reward. Mm. What could you do? What ideas? Well, call someone who might be lonely or sad. Make some window art for our church building to welcome our neighbors who are walking our property and our, and our labyrinth. If you're healthy and able, offer to pick up groceries for someone who can't. Think and speak kind and loving thoughts. And how about this? You could pray. Mm. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, by thinking a new thought, by resisting a return to the old, by continuing your resurrection or beginning a whole new resurrection. Day after day, think, say, and do at least one kindness and become aware of other kindnesses all around you, in your home and in your world. See with new eyes, eyes of love and faith. And finally, email me. Now I have enough people on Facebook right now who could type this in for others. Email me, my email is revchris, R-E-V-C-H-R-I-S, Hartford.org and tell me of those kindnesses, kindnesses that you're doing or that perhaps you're receiving. It is about giving and receiving. And we're going to include those stories without the mention of the people involved in a new newsletter section titled Kindness Unlimited. So send them, tell us about them. Let us spread the kindness because kindness is unlimited, for God is unlimited. I am so looking forward 
to hear it from you as you begin anew. Namaste. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so now this is a, a time in our service when we want to prepare for a, an offering. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I'm going to ask you, um, after the service is over, and perhaps you've already done it, um, to go to our and at the top, there's a blue banner, and over on the right hand, there's a, it says give. And so click that, and you'll be directed to a page where you can give a love offering for Sunday. And there'll be a drop down to make sure that you're, um, you're giving. Um, it goes to a Sunday. Um, but I also want you to think about how you're giving. I want you not so much to give to, but to give from. To give from your love of truth principles. To give of your love of unity. To give of your love of this wonderful community here. Because there will be a time, it's shortly not too long uh, in the future, when we're going to open up the doors. And your staff is going to be here greeting you in faith and in love. And so right now, though, take an idea, take a new thought, and hold that in your heart and make that part of your giving. Perhaps it's a thought of love, a, a thought of joy, um, a thought of peace, of comfort. Hold that in your heart as we say our our. our our giving prayer. I'm going to say a line and then ask that you repeat it after me. Divine love flowing as me. Divine love flowing as me. Blesses and multiplies all that I am and have. Blesses and multiplies all that I am and have. All that I give and receive. All that I give and receive. And so it is. Amen. And so it is. Amen. Thank you so much. And now Carolyn is uh, going to be uh, playing our Unity Peace song that will be followed by our prayer for protection. And so I hope you'll join with us on both those. Carolyn, that was beautiful. And I'm just getting my notes out here. Um, and so we're about now going to say our prayer for protection. And and uh, and now, um, oh, I'm not. My mic's not on. Thank you. It's good to have people here to remind me of these things. Okay, mic on. There we go. Ah. <laughs> so we're going to do our prayer for protection. And as I do, I'm going to ask that um, you repeat after me, and I somehow have lost it. Um, light. 
I'm just writing it down because I'll forget in a moment. And so we're gonna say our prayer for protection. And if you would um, follow me with that, that would be great. And hold on. Now you think I've done this about a million times, I would remember it. But here we are, all right. Our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. God protects us. I am the power of God. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. I am the presence of God. Wherever I am, God is. Wherever I am, God is. And where God is, all is well. And where God is, all is well. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, and uh, on behalf of our music director, Carolyn, who has one more song that she's going to sing for us, our prayer chaplain leader, uh, Deborah Giddings, and our worship uh, we're so glad that you joined us today. And we look forward to seeing you Wednesday night. And have a wonderful week. And here is Carolyn with one more song for you. This is the song that